Шановні пані та панове, прем'єр-міністр України Володимир Гройсман. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister of Ukraine Volodymyr Groysman. Dear guests, we ask to the welcoming word the co-founder of the Caucus of the Verkhovna Rada, Equal Opportunities Svetlana Wojciechowska. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to welcome everybody here and thank that you are with us today. And representing the next uh, speaker, I would like to say one single thing, that the efficiency of management it's not one-sided, because to adopt the law in the parliament is half of the matter, but to implement the law, that's another half of the matter. And in 2016, the co-founder of the Kirkus Equal Opportunities, they understood that the number of legislation adopted may have been uh, without, left without implementation. That At that time, we went to Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mr. Groisman. We spoke to him about our pay and what we should do, what we want to do, and his political will allowed us within these years to do what is done in Ukraine now. And this is the partnership of parliament and government, and this is an extremely important thing. Thank you very much, Mr. Groisman, and I welcome you to give your speech. Good afternoon, everybody. To everybody who is present here, I am glad and honored to have this unique opportunity for the second time to welcome the participants of this Congress. And I think this is an extremely important event, which attracts a lot of attention to the problems that, unfortunately, with gaining the independence, have been outside of the focus of our authorities and society as well. And if we put the question about the equality, I haven't any doubt, any other answers and responses that to provide gender equality for both men and women or women a man and I really think that a lot of time we haven't paid enough attention to this and I think that the part of the society which is still kind of uh, ill and they don't think that equality is necessary. What was the first, the initial step for our country or for my professional activity? Actually, the um, caucus equal opportunity, they started to actualize the problems that should be solved at the level of legislation or the Ukrainian cabinet of ministers. And I would like to say that I would like to thank for such warm words, but believe me, if it was wasn't your initiative and your uh, support, your energy, we wouldn't have been able to implement this uh, decision about the provision of 30% uh, percent of quotas. And then we voted the law about the local elections. And I was the head of the president of the Verkhovna Rada. And I was a little bit, I would say, captured by the representatives of the Equal Opportunities. We have some questions that need uh, salvation. And it wasn't the question, the matter for me. I und totally understood that it is necessary. And we should ensure the equality for our society. It should be accessible by everybody. And I think that our government, again, not without the participation of this uh, equal opportunities and through the representatives in our government we started to form the strategy what should we do at the level of government uh, different types of expertise different strategies and moreover today I'm glad that the representatives of women in Ukrainian government has a tendency to grow and today I cannot say that we have 20 percent but the fifth part of the Ukrainian government at the level of ministries and the deputy ministers the us are women and I can 
say, based on my own experience, in these cases, when women start doing something, there, there is a lot of responsibility there and high quality assurance. And I think that not to notice or not to identify this would be very unjust. Re in reality, we also have the ombudsman in gender equality questions, who uh, the deputy minister, Ivana Klimpushtenzade, who is present here, and she had the opportunity to speak to the audience. And I would like to say uh, that, and to add, that I think that we need uh, to demolish another, I think, unjust inequality. This is a question of salary and payment. When we observe the statistics, uh, women, due to some unknown reason, got 20% uh, less money. I have no response to this question. I think that this is kind of savage situation. It shouldn't be in the civilized society. In my opinion, this issue seeks for urgent salvation, either on the legislative level, because to get the same less money for the same job, it's uh, irresponsible. So if we have some offers in systemic regulating of this issue, it will be solved very, very fast, and we will consolidate the majority for the decision making. In general, I would like to say that the concert, which was Congress, which was established last year, is becoming more and more influential movement to fight for the right, equality in rights, and I am convinced that this movement is also support, uh, seeking for the social support, and as a result of its activity, Activity, we have very, very precise conclusions. So I would like to welcome you with the second Congress. I wish you success. I would like to uh, ensure you that Ukraine will be equal for everybody. Thank you very much. So well, uh, we kindly ask uh, all of you uh, could you stand up and have uh, the family picture just to have this? Uh, just stay at your seats, please, and we're going to take the group picture. Пані та панове, просимо не розходитися, залишайтеся, будь ласка, на своїх місцях. За мить ми розпочинаємо засідання четвертої дискусійної платформи. Залишайтесь, будь ласка, на своїх місцях. Пані та панове, просимо залишатися на своїх місцях. За мить стартує засідання четвертої дискусійної платформи розширення економічних можливостей для жінок та подолання дискримінації. Empowerment and ways to combat discrimination in the workplace and in companies.
Шановні гості, просимо займати свої місця. За мить розпочинаємо четверту дискусійну платформу. Шановні гості, розпочинаємо засідання четвертої дискусійної платформи «Розширення економічних можливостей для жінок та подолання дискримінації на робочому місці та у підприємстві». Перша частина дискусії присвячена питанням дискримінації жінок на ринку праці та гендерним розривам в оплаті, просування по кар'єрі. Увага на екран! Ladies and gentlemen, the first part of our session would be about the discussion, the role of women in this sphere of economic development or obstacles for their participations in economic development. So well and the difference in salary, 42%, according with the international economic forms, uh, the idea is just to uh, pass through this gap and financial possibilities should be on the equal level and it should be equal in 270 years so well the less resources the worst opportunity for self-realization for women why it happens first of all because of the stereotypes uh, towards the uh, female or male profession, uh, male more prestigious and more complicated uh, profession, so well. Also, the uh, other thing is vertical segregation because careers, opportunities are faster for men. And the, the third, discrimination by gender. So well, women are uh, less actively uh, hired for the vacant places. And the fourth, uh, because of the uh, special choice, uh, uh, self-conscious self-choice, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so why why we have to break through the gender inequality in the economic sphere? So involvement of uh, uh, women raise up the competition on the labor market. So well, and the research uh, proves that women would be more efficient, having more money. So well, and the gender equality uh, also stimulates the economic development and social development. Systematic reforms in Ukraine, uh, that's the encouragement time for gender changes. So I would like to represent the moderator of the first uh, part of the discussion plan for Ms. Salona Babak, member of parliament, co-chair of the Equal Opportunities Caucus and the Parliament of Ukraine. So well, let us uh, invite Ms. Oksana Makarova, Minister of Finance of Ukraine, Ms. Olga Bielkova, member of parliament, deputy chairperson of Committee of Fuel and Energy Complex, Nuclear Policy and Nuclear Safety of the Parliament of Ukraine, Mrs. Uh, uh, Urbanovich, Mayor of Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, uh, Civic Action, Toronto, Canelo, Canada, uh, Marina Saprikin, uh, uh, Head of the Center Development of Corporate Social Responsibility, Founder of the STEM Girls and Career Hub Initiatives, Member of the STEM Coalitions Board in Ukraine. So, Mrs. Aliona, the floor is yours. So good afternoon, uh, uh, 
dear ladies and gentlemen, and now, now we move on uh, with the different uh, subject, uh, different topic. Uh, this is different uh, from the first part. So well, we are moving on with the economical aspects and how the policy should influence on the economical opportunity for women and how to expand the economical activities for women and uh, with them. So well, the second time in within the program, we do have the time for this very issue, economical issues, the expansion of the economical possibilities of women and also and the, the, how to get rid of the discriminations, of, uh, gender discriminations on the labor market. So while well, we are covering this type of topics, because unfortunately in Ukraine for right now, we do have the discrimination on the market, the labor market for women. Uh, and you've seen this video and, uh, you know, you paid uh, your attention, not uh, even uh, uh, one time, but few times uh, on the different problems, and that we do still have the difference in salaries for men and for women. And systematically, the salaries for men uh, is higher for 20% than women's salary. What is not surprising? It's not so badly surprising. the The, the idea is that we are still um, observing the negative practice of the lowest uh, salary. Uh, in the budget sphere, so traditionally in medical uh, system, healthcare system, in the cultural system, in the social spheres, uh, uh, they have the lowest salaries uh, for their job. And then, in fact, when we say females profession, this profession became the females because of the um, level of the salary, the lowest salary. It's a kind of a closed circle when we say females profession, even what we say, because men even they uh, have no desire to deal with this very profession, and the woman, um, she has to go there because she has to support the family. So and then about poverty, poverty, and then those who are in that po poverty, the women of uh, senior ages, so old ages. So we have to take our special attention to, attention to this uh, issue. So well, and you've seen on the video that. That's the idea is not the salary level, but also not only, but uh, that's the national uh, revenue is also less uh, when there is a kind of a distribution of the GDPs and 45% less, uh, they, the women get less than, than men. So well, that is why uh, I want to say that during this very panel, I want to, to discuss the issue how to use the best international practices, how to use uh, uh, all uh, experiences uh, we have in Ukraine, how we can uh, uh, overcome all those barriers uh, in the salaries and the payment system and how to involve the women into the economic activity. Before I give the floor to our speaker, I want to pay the attention on, uh, all of all of you to the statistics. Statistics of the year 2018 tells us that the women between 25 and up until 50 years old, uh, they are 1.6 million of women between 25 50 years they are economically un inactive those who are not uh, um, uh, unemployed those who are not active those who are not officially working so 1.6 million men that's from 25 years old till 50 years old so while well, speaking about the reasons why they are not working what they are uh, decided not to be economically active, we have to observe. And then what we're going to do just to provide them the motivation to um, make this uh, opportunity for them to continue to work but not to stay at home. That uh, That is the idea we're, we're going to discuss uh, this issue and we'd like to use all the international uh, best practices and best experience. I would like to give a floor to the Ministry of Finance to Oksana Makarova. Markarova, and I think we have to ask her what uh, uh, the Ukrainian government is doing in, in regards uh, to encourage uh, 
these uh, females' uh, professions would stop to be females and would get the additional salary. So we have to increase the gaps in between the salary indexes. Uh, and also what uh, the Ministry of Finance is doing actively together with international partners uh, just to, to avoid all the inequalities of the um, so-called financial inequalities. So I'll, uh, your floor, the floor is yours. So thank you for the invitation. And I'm very happy that this tradition is continued. And then we do have the very interesting forum and we can discuss our common uh, uh, problems and then how to solve it. Uh, and, uh, you know, talking about the previous forum, we can say what uh, had been changed, what had not been changed. But the majority uh, can say that when we say teacher, that's what we say she teacher. That's a standard understanding. When we say she minister, I mean, it's very unusual to hear this uh, uh, word. It's not Ukrainian experience. That's also the experience of the world uh, uh, practice. So while some of the countries are very fast in reaching the equality Equality, gender equality, some not, but the reasons are so um, uh, diverse. To, and the main idea, the main reason is very deep in the deeper uh, things. It's a cultural, um, so called, uh, um, in the cultural roots, uh, uh, deep diving, that's a kind of a, uh, a self self limits uh, for the women. So we'll, we're not always so assured that we can um, reach the position. And so well, a no nominee committee, they were just trying to find uh, the uh, so uh, specific uh, uh, the committees, uh, so observation committees, and uh, uh, there is a tender so we can uh, uh, find women for this type of uh, uh, steering committees. So, well, uh, we have to um, motivate uh, more women to participate in this uh, steering committee's activity. What we're doing on the level of the Ministry of Finan Finance, it's not only on the level of Ministry of Finance, uh, but the government and this project of gender budgeting is a kind of a systematic uh, response to the uh, 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 idea of how to solve this problem. And uh, yesterday, the Parliament of Ukraine supported us, and then we're going to take into consideration the issue of genders uh, equalities. And uh, what does it mean? We should not provide uh, every grievance to be spent in an efficient way, but we also have to uh, um, uh, understand how uh, correctly the grievance is spending, uh, especially uh, dealing with the genders uh, ideas. So well, what are we going to do with this? So, well, we have to understand that, that this is not the issue of one gender conference, the, but the whole budget process starting from planning and uh, till the execution of the uh, decision. So well, it should be a kind of a uh, so must uh, 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 have uh, things uh, uh, within the ministry's activities. So starting with the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Defense, etc. We have to observe all the criteria and all that pilots, ministers, they are working quite actively. And we are planning to expand these ideas to other spheres. And we understand that the pilots, municipalities, uh, they are working quite actively. So we have to expand all these uh, changes uh, for the budget process uh, since next year so we'll end this uh, ideas and then our plan so well uh, next year we will uh, uh, use as a main rule in the declarations for the year 2021 and we will uh, uh, have this uh, declarations ideas uh, to be discussed uh, as the main criteria through our budget uh, planning uh, topics and what, uh, how to increase the uh, salary in the sphere of the social, cultural, and uh, health care, how to increase the salaries, because they do have uh, a lot of women working for this sphere. Is it the issue of the competency of the government? Do you plan to change something in the budgeting process, how to um, uh, 
um, get rid of these gaps. Well, this is the so-called bilateral issue. So, well, we have to increase the salary because of the efficiency. So, well, let's uh, um, uh, observe about the so-called first aid uh, or uh, what we call uh, the um, um, very special uh, primarily line uh, among uh, uh, doctors so well they should have the highest salary so well, what about the uh, differences so we're talking about the uh, um, uh, education the education is higher than the average of uh, salaries among the OECD countries so well we have the increase how to increase the efficiency from the inside uh, how to increase the efficiency uh, when we're talking about the education, we have to compare the number of hours. Uh, is it uh, important for our teachers uh, to get a higher salary? Yes, definitely, no doubt, yes. Uh, but yes, we have to have the same level as, for example, in Poland. But we cannot uh, increase the taxes uh, or some uh, other. So uh, uh, we we have to be as smart to think whether we need we need to uh, 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 increase the uh, salaries. Yes, we need, but we need also to uh, raise the efficiency. But uh, you know the answers. Uh, uh, still in process so well I have to say that as a moderator I um, we do not uh, get any answer so we have uh, lots of uh, uh, issues dealing with healthcare so nurses uh, the uh, uh, small salaries in the sphere of culture social uh, official social servants also very uh, of low <coughs> salaries so well and that officially created discrimination in salaries because uh, that's the positions of great need but the main salaries the so-called the lowest salaries for the social workers uh, so well, I think during this forum we can be openly and frankly uh, talking it between us just to uh, admit that budget spheres, medicine, culture, social sphere, uh, all this above mentions, they need to have dramatically changes in the salaries on the level of uh, the uh, normative documents, state documents, just to get this balance in the salary between men and women, because uh, we are talking about the spheres where majority are women, and this is uh, absolutely official statistics, and I think that we have to take our uh, attention to pay our attention to this above mentioned things uh, and uh, shall i answer shall i answer no uh, we understand how to avoid the discrimination me as a woman i of course support this uh, how to avoid the discrimination when well, we are talking about the medicine medicine is a good uh, example this year we are for the first time for the year 2019, we will pay some services from the private companies from the budget. So, for example, tests, medical tests, uh, medical tests or labs, uh, and the uh, employees of labs, the majority uh, women, uh, dentists, uh, also the majority women. Uh, so, yeah, we have to find the efficiency and efficient things. So, we'll just to rise up the salaries, then we will, you know, uh, rise up the taxes. Uh, so, and expenses course so we have to support the uh, the we have to uh, support you and agree with you so well, let's talk about um, the idea of uh, uh, analyzing the best practices, uh, how to involve the women into the economic activity, how to expand the economic ab abilities. And let's get the uh, specific uh, examples from the international partners and especially from Canada. So we do have the very interesting speakers. Uh, and I would like to give a floor to Mr. Barry Urbanovich, Mayor of Kitchener City, Ontario, Canada. This uh, town is located not too far 
from Toronto, and he's an absolutely unique mayor. And he also not only a mayor, he was the president of the Canadian municipalities. He's the honorable president of this federation. And um, he is the member of the regional council of the very interesting Waterloo uh, uh, region. It's a kind of a Silicon Valley of Canada. So this very person established the committee dealing with the um, issues of the involvement of women into the process of decision making in the self-governance sphere. So, well, I would like to ask you the question, what do you think, what the mayor can do without accepting some uh, activities from the government of the law? what the mayor can do for the women to realize themselves uh, to realize themselves actively in the economic activities on the local level what mayor uh, can do just to encourage the women please thank you in advance it's a real pleasure to be here with uh, all of you today velika chest butitut swami mistaya os krain ijing thank you so much it's so great to be here I, uh, in, the, in the beginning, I want to acknowledge uh, my local government colleagues that are in the room, whether you're here as an elected person from a city or a, or a town, or whether you're here as a staff person. Uh, it's those people at a grassroots level that uh, ensure that our cities are great places to live, work, and play in. And they do a lot of hard work, particularly during the high anxiety uh, times that you've been experiencing over the past few weeks. And so I just want you to know that uh, your Canadian friends uh, stand uh, beside you, as do your international local government friends, uh, as you work to protect your uh, sovereignty here in, in the Ukraine. It is an honor for me to be here as the mayor of the city of Kitchener and a councillor uh, in the regional municipality of Waterloo. Uh, we are Canada's 10th largest community and as has been indicated on the western end of the Toronto Waterloo Region Innovation Corridor where we're home to uh, many uh, tech companies including Google's Canadian Engineering Headquarters, uh, Blackberry, OpenText and uh, many uh, others including uh, many, many startups. My last visit actually to Ukraine was two years ago uh, as part of the Mayor's Summit on Economic Development and prior to that in 2012 during my time as President uh, of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, and the PROMISE program that FCM sponsors together with our Canadian government uh, here in, uh, in Ukraine. And in my comments today, I'm, I'm bringing that lens, but also that of United Cities and local governments, uh, where that organization, and I'm part of the presidency, represents local governments in international affairs, including the development of uh, the, the SDGs, the, um, the, uh, the development goals. And in particular today, we'll talk about SDG 5, which talks about gender equality. Um, and finally, I, I want, would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that the attitude that has developed in our country, I think, has partially changed because of the leadership that starts at the highest office in our country, and that being of our, our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. In fact, when he became Prime Minister, he became the first Prime Minister to uh, select a, uh, a cabinet of 50% women. And uh, when he was asked by the media, well, why did you do that? He looked at them and he just said, it's 2015, and that was, uh, that was his answer. I think cities and local governments can play an important role in the advancement of, of, of uh, women uh, by modeling pr uh, proper behaviors through our hiring practices, uh, doing things like eliminating the gender uh, pay gap and more. We can certainly support the creation of diversity, equity, and inclusion committees in our cities and be very conscious uh, in our hiring decisions as well as addressing problems when they occur. In my own community, we had a small section of our city, quite frankly, where there were some issues that were developing um, and uh, some of the male staff were being inappropriate uh, towards, uh, towards women. And uh, there was a decision made by our city administration that we needed to let someone go. We needed to fire someone. And when they came to tell me this as mayor, I said, there are many things that I find that uh, there are many areas of gray in. 
when it comes to this, there is no gray. It's black and white. And if somebody is crossing that line about what's appropriate, we need to send a message to the rest of the organization. And in fact, after the, we did that, what we did was the new person that we hired to replace the individual that was gone was a woman, so that we send a stronger message to the rest of the organization about what um, can be done. And then simple things in our communities, like providing childcare during community meetings. We heard earlier today some, one of the speakers talk about how uh, it's so difficult. Well, little things like that can make a difference. In my own community, from an economic development point of view, um, I want to say, particularly in the technology sector, this is a big issue. Only 3% of women are CEOs of technology companies. 39% of the graduates in uh, computer science and in, in computer engineering are women, but after two years, 46% of them leave the profession. And so we have worked as a community with our tech sector to embrace, to support local startups that start up with, uh, uh, that are women-led and also uh, ensure that we provide accelerator programs. So we have one called the Fierce Founders Accelerator to support women uh, who are actually trying to grow their startups into growing uh, tech companies. Unfortunately, we don't have as many as we would like to see, but we've certainly seen improvements in those uh, statistics. Nationally, our government launched the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy uh, in their federal budget of 2018 as a centerpiece of the budget. Uh, because we recognize that when women succeed, everyone succeeds. And so uh, when you looked at some of the statistics at the time, only 16% of small and medium-sized businesses were majority women-owned, only 10% of our high-growth firms were women-owned, and only 8% of women-owned businesses Sorry, uh, uh, focused on exports. And so we recognized we needed to do more. And so some of the key areas of focus that came out of that budget were helping women-led businesses grow, increasing access to capital, improving access to federal business innovation programming, and, and enhancing data knowledge. Now there was reference made to being a, a supporter of women in terms of the starting of women's committees at FCM and UCLG, and that is true. I remember back when uh, some of the women uh, at, at, on our board of uh, directors at uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities wanted to start a women's committee and nobody wanted to give them time to, uh, or staff support for the committee. And there was actually three of us men, myself and two, I was a city councillor at the time, and two other councillors that stood up and said, no, this is not okay, we need to give them the full support as we would any other committee and got others to come on board and ultimately support it. The same thing happened at the United Cities and local governments. We now have a standing committee on gender equality since 2011. It's currently led by the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo. Um, but at the time, the same thing was happening. The men were saying, oh, you just go and have your talks and, and, and leave us, you know, and, and eventually maybe someday we'll give you a committee. And it was the women from Africa that spoke out loudly and said, no, this is not good enough. And then a number of elected uh, mayor, mayors and councillors from around the world, males, male allies I'll call them, who spoke up and said, we need to change it. And today we have an automatic seat for the chair of that women's standing committee on the presidency of the organization. Uh, there are things that we can do as mayors and councillors in being allies in terms of changing legislation. In my province, for example, if you were a woman counselor who was pregnant, uh, and let's say you, because of medical reasons, needed to take some time off, if you were gone more than three months, the rule said that the council could vote you off of the city council. And we said, well, that's not acceptable. How are we going to encourage young women who we need to have around our council tables to, to, to actually run for office if we, have, if we have draconian rules like this. And so we went and we changed the legislation so that now women and men as young parents are protected uh, when, uh, when they're starting families and having them sit on city councils. Because you need the 20 and 30 year olds on your councils as much as you need the 50 and 60 year olds. 
Very and weak. so, yes. We need to vote. Okay. okay. On. One last, last <laughs> comment. Role of allies. Uh, I just want to say that it's so important for men to be allies to women. When you see things on social media, call it out. If things are improper, report it to Twitter, report it to Facebook. They will do something about it. And call out unacceptable behaviors on things like talking about what women are wearing and things like that. It is 2018, and that's not acceptable. Slava Ukrainski Zinki, Slava Ukraina. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this very um, uh, useful information. I would like to pass the floor to my colleague, the uh, members of parliament, Mrs. Olga Bielkova, member of the parliament, deputy chairperson of the Committee of the Fuel and Energy Complex, uh, Nuclear Policy and Nuclear Safety of the Parliament of Ukraine. Very un. Uh, uh, female, I'd rather say. So while well, she is uh, in charge of the very specific director, monopoly, nafta, gas complex, oil and gas complex, in other words, and, and in this very sphere, we can see the very serious disproportional uh, um, <clears throat> disbalance uh, situation. So well, we don't see women on the leading positions, and that is why we invited Olga to share with us as a politician uh, her vision what to be changed in the resources uh, industries and the industrial industries and the monopolies industries on the level of the corporate managements to see more women. So the floor is yours, please. So thank you so much. So what a wonderful presentation. So I do have lots of problems to be shared, but I also would like to mention when I'm not going to talk about coal, gas, or electricity, electric energy, so I would uh, rather avoid to talk about this. But uh, in my intervention, I would like to say that the problematics of economics uh, issues, etc. so all this uh, situation and the economical situation also very influential. And then, uh, it goes even to the war, uh, and it's a kind of a social um, and justice situation. So, well, and Irina Free is also dealing with the specific problems at her ministries, also as well as me. So, but the majority problem uh, is uh, the because of the lack of the distribution of the resources, the wrong distribution, the resources are distributing in the economical and the political way. So what about the pretensions into the political sense? President, prime minister, deputies, ministers, or the local deputies, politicians, I mean, yes. What is going to be, that's the idea, the only one idea. We need quotes for women in the policy making areas. And uh, for us, the discussion about the quotas in economy, there is nothing in this. Uh, so, well, we are not talking about the quotas for economy. Well, and they say, well, it's quite misunderstanding. It is quite hard to understanding or whatever. So, but I would like to say that in Ukraine, we have the equal access for the education for women, girls, uh, on the as equal as men. So, we're well, analyzing all the <coughs> uh, achievements, educational achievements at school or at the university. We cannot uh, mention that uh, women, girls, uh, are better in the process of uh, uh, learning. Where are they when we're talking about the uh, specific process of choosing the leaders for the big companies, for other agencies, etc.? Are they at that? Where are they at least? Or oh, that's the problem of they p uh, women, or is it the problem of the country? So well, they spend their resources for this very important participants of this economical circles, and then what? We didn't get any uh, a coefficient of the um, <coughs> participation from them. So well, is it the Ukrainian problem or not? It was mentioned that three percent, only three percent, are leading the technical companies, but already five percent, uh, even. 5% of the women, 5% of the women are leaders of the technical, are uh, huge uh, tycoons of the company. So we're talking about the leading uh, uh, officials, authorities. So well, those, and they are on the second position, the deputies, or they are those who just, you know, dealing with the uh, so-called uh, highest uh, uh, top management's wheels. They are serving uh, or uh, working uh, with the wheels of the first uh, uh, 
uh, people. I would like to express officially, I would like to express my official public thanks towards to the political quarters. Politicians, they are dealing the forces, the uh, uh, different uh, way. So Mrs. Gerashenko, Irina, uh, uh, devoted the great part of her life just to support uh, this equality issue. So I would like to express my uh, personal, uh, my personal uh, thanks uh, for her very so-called uh, soft impact to Vitaly Klitschko. The Vitaly was the lad, uh, the leader of the Udar party, the punch party that was, and uh, that uh, she was very soft uh, in uh, um, influencing and pushing so well, and uh, that was the very special uh, uh, impact from her. So we passed the election process together with Irina and then for that period of time they um, told me oh you just you know were bo 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 chosen because of quotas so because uh, of what because I was the leader of the ventures fund because of I I graduated the best uh, university of the world now they told me that because of the quote but when I'm talking with Mrs. Aliona or with my uh, colleagues, uh, let's stop to discuss quotas issues. It's not quotas. So, Mrs. Irina, thank you for using your political capital just to create the preconditions for me or other people. And uh, and I hope that uh, these uh, uh, women are with us and they will come for the next parliament. Uh, and I would like to use my political capital for uh, the reason uh, to uh, promote the ideas and the parliament should accept the quotas regarding the uh, participation of women uh, to uh, participate in the leading uh, bodies or authorities of the leading companies. Uh, so well, all the steering uh, uh, councils permitted, so well, we're just talking about the public neutral companies. So these are uh, biggest companies, those who are dealing with the biggest resources in the economy, and uh, uh, <clears throat> that's the um, uh, very important uh, thing from them to be active in this. Uh, that, uh, and uh, among this, uh, well, let me say a few traditional Naftogaz, Ogrzgaz, Vizobovania, Ogrzalizneitsa, Energo Atom. These are the companies. Do you think they are males companies from the point of view of consumption? No, I'm doubting because the consumption uh, belongs to the majority of the society, which are women. And this is both for men and women. So who are and what we are uh, talking about? We're just asking about. Uh, us because this is our right uh, to um, manage these uh, biggest companies and to think about the resources. I work for the PEC committee. We have three women. For the first of the history of the Parliament of Ukraine, we have three women there. So well, and there was a kind of a mocking attitude from my colleagues. But I promised to them. As for the energy regulators, as to distribution of renters, etc., etc. So I promised a lot, and I made a lot. So thank you, Irina. Thank you for this. Uh, Honor, I got uh, uh, the, this great honor to join these political forces. So, well, I said uh, what I promised I've done. Uh, my commitments was done, done, and this is what women do, what they are doing. They are institutionally dealing with the changes. They are institutionally changing the situation. And I would like to ask uh, that the steering council should not be uh, uh, in um, uh, 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 the steering committees and then other uh, committees should have more women. So, well, and I would like to say that every steering uh, committee uh, should have at least three women among the six. I'm not asking for a lot of things. It's only for three. And uh, talking about the fundamental uh, research and analysis, I want to say it's not the silver bullet. It's not the way to solve all the problems, but what we can do, all these councils would be more transparent and open. To, and uh, it's we can see all that business women to come to the management of the company. The second, men and women, 
Mathematically, it was proved scientific and empiric way uh, they used to prove <clears throat> when women uh, works on the equal level, all the, com the decisions would become more creative, progressive, innovative, etc. This is what we really need uh, for Ukrainian economy. And all the women should be a kind of a leader, milestones for those girls, uh, these best samples for the girls to realize themselves. When after class would be led by women equally with the men, and maybe the discussions about the gas price uh, and the price for other resources would be different. So, and uh, and also <clears throat> uh, the issue how to get the energy independence would be even more simple. And thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Olga. And I think this Congress really uh, supports with the resolution, the proposals uh, regarding the quotas uh, and the representatives, so men and women, at least minimum. Uh, we're just talking uh, uh, with the state companies. Uh, we're talking about the quotas in there. So I would like to give a floor to the representatives of the other sectors. We've been talking to the self-governments about cooperative level. And today we have a guest. Uh, a Canadian lady, Mrs. Uh, Savon Palvatsian, the absolutely unique lady. She is the chief executive officer at Civil Action at Toronto, Canada. She is in the list of 100 most influential women or women of Canada, by the way. We greet you with this. And uh, she's the Council on the level of the prime ministers uh, on the gender uh, issue and the involvement of women and uh, uh, to support the rights of uh, women to realize the uh, abilities. So I would like to ask you, today you have seen a lot of women in the uh, whole, those who are representatives of the different uh, civil initiatives, many of them, many from the different cities, those who are um, um, ready to unite uh, around the specific projects uh, or ideas, but they do not uh, uh, feel quite clearly what uh, uh, they have to do, how to be influential for the decision-making process from the side of the authority. They have to know how to realize their rights uh, in the economical spheres, etc. So, well, I would like to ask you, please, share with your experience with our audience. Thank you so much in advance. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted and honored to be with you this afternoon. This is my first trip to Ukraine, and it is a city which, and, and a country, yes, thank you. I've texted, I have two young daughters, and I've texted them pictures of all of you here today and of the sites that I've seen already, and I look forward to bringing my children here to Kyiv to have their experience as well. I am a very, very proud Canadian. Though my family's history entered Canada about 100 years ago. And my grandfather is, was from Armenia. And Canada made him home. He came at 12. He had no money. He had no education. But he started a family. And that family started a family. And our family came to understand very early in life that with education, almost any path is possible. I stress that because we have now taken for granted as a society that education is one of the quickest routes to change the trajectory of someone's life, in particular, women and girls' lives. What we do with that education is not yet equal. In Canada, more women now have university degrees than men. We are packing law schools and medical schools and teachers' colleges and dental schools. We are represented at every order across academics and are moving quickly into positions of influence and, and power in some of those areas as well. But the full change hasn't yet happened. At the very, very, very top, at some of these institutions, power is getting very hard to let go of. Groups of women, 
when they come together collectively to chip away at it, succeed. But we have an expression in Canada called the tall poppy syndrome. Have you ever seen a poppy field? They're beautiful because all the poppies grow at almost exactly the same height. Every once in a while, one poppy shoots up. And that poppy sticks out because it's so out of line with the rest of the poppies in the field. We mow that poppy down when we don't support other women. Once you make it as women, to the top of your game. If you don't turn around and grab 50 more hands and bring her with you, you are not leading. You are building your resume. If as women, when you have the privilege of sitting around tables of influence to contribute to the budgets, to contribute to the policy, to contribute to the social programs that get established. If you don't bring the lenses that come from being a woman or a girl, if you don't bring those into the room, don't expect them to sit there by definition. Because lived experience is the most powerful education that any of us can earn. So when I sit in my tables in Toronto, Canada, or where I watch our country's next challenge. And Barry's right, we have done extraordinary investment in STEM to make sure young girls feel confident. Did you know that the confidence levels between girls and boys are virtually the same until age 12? And then they free fall for girls. So in Canada, we have started to scoop that age and really invest in age 12 and start to think about how science and technology and engineering and mathematics, where our numbers are so poor, what we can do to young children and invest in them as they go. Because if we have this conversation, by the time you're sitting around the labor market, it's too late. Confidence is part of what is required to see some of these changes happen. And good intentions are far too over-indexed. We've done a brilliant job in our country, I think, quantifying the business success behind having women at the table. Companies that have the majority of their management teams that are women outperform their peers by 56%. It just makes good business sense to have that kind of diversity sitting around your table. The bottom line speaks to it, the education paths speak to it, and the interest of women speak to it. So it's my hope that all of those factors, when combined, move the needle to the next way. Because if we don't move the needle more aggressively, it will take 217 more years for gender equality to happen. None of us is that patient. And none of our daughters ought to be either. So I thank you for your commitment to this topic. I look forward to watching, watching Ukraine push new levels, be relentless, be impatient and be so proud of the commitment that you've already made and some of the advancements that have already happened here at home. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Savon. Thank you so much for this brilliant speech. Uh, and you uh, uh, and I say speech, uh, and that's a brilliant speech you've uh, done so well. If you would like to uh, um, get this information, how to collect these forces, uh, how to move it on just to be active, and I think uh, maybe we will continue to share our experience later on, but I would like to give a floor to Mrs. Marina Saprikina, head of the Center Development of Corporate Social Responsibility, founder of the STEM Girls and uh, Career uh, Hub uh, Initiatives, members of the STEM.
um, coalition born in Ukraine. So through engineering, math, etc. So well, uh, uh, she's uh, involved in the girls. So now I would like to ask you. So well, I visited the very big industrial city, and I've heard the conversation between two girls. So well, they uh, graduated the uh, highest institutions and the engineers, and then they were trying to find a job on the highest uh, industrial uh, enterprise and uh, and they've got the, the information that there are no vacancies and uh, and the best uh, recommendations to start with the cleaners position so we we'll, would like to say what we can say to that uh, women how stop to demotivate them uh, um, and uh, and how to um, support them to continue to get these specialities interesting and what to do with that proposal to start as a cleaner uh, day carriers, how to get rid of this demotivation, um, whether it could be changeable, how it could change, what to do to provide this ability to use the highest uh, perfect uh, in, uh, education. So thank you. That's a very interesting question. That's an interesting case you've told. And, but it seems we're just talking that uh, we have to start with the education. But when we're talking about the economical uh, uh, abilities, possibilities for women, so well, we have to think that this is not the problem of uh, current day. That's not the problem of, uh, of, of them today. It's a problem we're facing previously. Uh, we, we had the... I've uh, seen it previously, and then this is uh, the problem uh, they taught with. And then I would like to uh, <clears throat> give you a very, um, very special experience. We had the Galuzins Fund with the population, so well, and we asked the kids of the third uh, uh, um, grade, and we asked them uh, to draw the four uh, professions, IRO, uh, uh, security person, virusologist, rhinopathologist, and uh, savior. So how many uh, uh, women they were uh, drawing? No, nothing. They were only drawing the men. And they, when we just uh, uh, introduced the representatives of these above-mentioned professions to the kids, the kids were very excited, and they didn't even expect that the women can be in charge of this type of protections. When we're just uh, talking about STEM, technological companies, about 70% of the future professions would be STEM uh, skills. Uh, STEM skills would be in great use in future, so that this uh, education there would be more in competition because the I mean, women could get more salaries in the STEM profession. So STEM profession, this uh, uh, even 90% uh, higher. And it seems to me that we do have uh, very simple things uh, we have to start with. As I already told and I mentioned the education. Now also, we have to train the trainers, the teachers. and. Uh, the, uh, so well, uh, among that uh, uh, sphere, they have uh, lots of uh, stereotypes. Uh, and uh, they say that this is a uh, uh, women's profession teacher. So well, and we also, uh, we made a lot of acetones with schools, uh, cool girls, with students, etc. So when all the girls, they, practically all of them, they told us that there are lots of stereotypes. Uh, I'd rather say, <coughs> uh, that uh, stereotypes and they uh, even getting the bad uh, marks because of the stereotypic attitude. So we're talking with the researcher, with scientists. Uh, it was the established the uh, award for the uh, young uh, scientists. Uh, and one woman uh, 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 was so brilliant, uh, but they refused to provide her with the award because it's a kind of a um, superstitious tradition to give the uh, uh, award first to the lady. So, uh, so we also started with the STEM lesson competition. So it was a uh, STEM. It was very interesting to be trained to the kids and. Uh, on the losing the selling, uh, this is the fund we got uh, the support from them. So well, we organized more than 300 lessons to them, and they were, well, you can't believe, but they are uh, all uh, uh, out of this gender sensibility. So well, uh, they are even. Uh, 
forgot about the gender's uh, presence. So uh, that was interesting idea. The Ukrainian initiative, by the way, and uh, today this initiative, which is, by the way, driven to expand this uh, initiative in the different countries. And the initiative has the name Girl STEM. That means when the very famous to women, those who are working for the technological companies, ministries, and other organizations, uh, they uh, would be uh, available to mentor the students and, and girls, school girls, and then for the three days period, for three, sorry, three month uh, period of time. And then after that, the girls could uh, choose the STEM profession after this mentoring process. So, and this chain it is the so-called the very special um, situation when we just you know losing the uh, women. Be yes, the reason is what because they've got the uh, message that technological specializations is not for women, and among the uh, 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 men among the guys, so one person live in the university, for example. Or the third is the person also got the brilliant education is not joining the technological company. It's a great loss for the budget of Ukraine. So, well, we already made the calculation with the Levanova Institutes, and we came to the conclusion that this is the annual loss for Ukraine is about 450 million grivnias. So, so that is why the great loss of the women's potential. That is why the main thing I want to share and when I was taught uh, by the program of Girls STEM, we do have a lot of women here, so we have to understand that we have to support uh, the ladies, the women. We have to support one, two, three women. Then it would be a kind of a great important step to the women's leadership. Thank you so much. So, dear colleagues, uh, in fact, we are uh, talking about the motivation ideas. We understand that even the best uh, flower uh, is not available to change something. Let's unite, and we're doing this, what we're talking. We've heard about the, we've been discussing about the efficiency of the uh, budget resources, distributions, and we know that uh, it should be important to find the balance, how to increase the salaries. We came to the conclusion that we have to start to work uh, with the gender balances and the leaderships, or at least on the level of the state enterprises. And we've heard that even today, the mayors could uh, uh, start their own programs to support the women, uh, those who are uh, working with the kids. Uh, and also, it could be also done from the local levels. We also got about the information about the programs uh, for mentoring, motivation, and professional uh, uh, orientations uh, for the so-called science, technologies, engineers, and math professions. So, well, and I, th I think that we had such a wonderful uh, presentations. And for right now, we have. Uh, um, time for Q&A session. So will the first hand and the second here, so please. I'm a biologist, but I've been the journalist and the chief editor of the newspaper. I'm from Benitsa, and I've been uh, the director for the information agency, and then I decided to follow my main speciality, and I become the assistant uh, of the university. I'm a professor already, by the way, and I understand that uh, to work as the assistant is very important and very hard, uh, and it's even more harder than to be the chief editor of the newspaper, because it demands a lot of intellectual efforts. And uh, uh, I want to ask Oksana Markarova, so well, the great demands uh, in the efficiency of our work. Uh, my American colleagues have uh, lived in the uh, U.S. Uh, for one year, and so we're working more harder, and so we're just changing the uh, 
uh, programs. So well, we have to teach the English language for the students. So well, we have to create the uh, specific exams for them. So we have to improve the English lab language level. So what our efficiency of my labor is of the great demands from the sides uh, of our government to pay 20,000 less uh, 20 times less than uh, in the United States. My salary is less than in army. My salary is less than uh, 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 doctor's salary, etc. But I want to say that uh, I agree with other speakers uh, that this is uh, uh, the wrong distribution of the salaries, for, especially those who are working in the social sphere. Yeah, so, well, uh, this is the reason why we have the we are very efficient, but the salary is not uh, so enough good. So, well, well, could you explain what to do? So, before Mrs. Oksana provide you with answers, so well, I want to ask only one question, please, very briefly. I would like to be very briefly. I don't want to demand the efficiency from you. I demand the efficiency from us to use the budget per funds more efficient. So well, the budget costs should be, uh, the budget funds uh, should not go to the uh, energy inefficient uh, stuff. So well, we have to do everything to use uh, uh, the uh, uh, right uh, distribution. So well, we understand that the salaries are really small and we have to pay more for them because every woman should be uh, absolutely sure of the herself of, of her work etc so well, we have to understand it's not only the decision to increase the rights you know the budget they can find the budget online so well the idea is when we're talking about the efficiency we're talking about the efficiency which will uh, uh, give us the opportunity for redistribution of the funds uh, we have to spend them more efficiently. Thank you so much. We uh, that will do work. My name is Mariana Voznitz. I'm the Ahmadid uh, Clinical Hospital from Lviv. I'm very thankful for this panel discussion, that uh, especially for reminding a lot of uh, issues uh, dealing with healthcare. So. Uh, Ten uh, percent uh, of our health uh, care system; those are, are uh, so-called uh, chief executives. I have no idea. That's a stereotype uh, we're facing in our country. But we are about the same as in Canada. Neurosurgeons and cardiosurgeons are women, also uh, not always, but. Uh, uh, just what this mainly men's profession, but mainly for women, this is the uh, nurses and the other medical staff. Uh, but uh, I agree with Mr. Mrs. Makar. Car, we have to reorganize the things. We have to. Uh, uh, I've been to uh, last week to Warsaw. I've been to the university hospital. Ninety-five percent of our soldiers of the. Uh, Ukrainian women are working there, 95 uh, percent, and uh, we have to understand uh, uh, that they have to work, uh, and then that uh, uh, even we are losing our nurses because they are living to or pull into work there. So what I'm talking about, uh, women, uh, I agree that we have to. Um, invite women for this active work. Uh, as for today, uh, for example, uh, there are a few pretendants to the chief executive position. Uh, you know, uh, easy to uh, invite for this position the men. Uh, and men is like the, uh, like the boss. Uh, but there is a woman, and uh, the woman has uh, lots of uh, skills, but uh, she's very modest, and we have to invite her, push her, uh, involve her, etc. So, well, if the person, the lady, is not self-assured, so we have to support her. So, well, and I think uh, 
we do have lots of uh, panels, economic panel, uh, uh, military, etc. So I would be very happy to have the medical panels in future. Thank you so much. And the last question, if you want so well, please. Good afternoon, Valeria from the city of Dnipro. I think uh, we missed the very important things. Uh, uh, Nani from the state, that's a very interesting project. Nani from the side of the state. Nani from the state is very important thing. So, well, uh, and uh, to, could you comment about the perspectives and the plans as for the maternity uh, leaves and maternity periods? So what is the perspectives for future? What is the situation is uh, right now? Nani, Nani from state. This is a project uh, which has the name Nani from the state. So, well, we already made the uh, so-called uh, specific uh, uh, the panel, uh, which about the uh, fathering uh, things. So, and that's for the maternity stuff of things. I would like to commend. Uh, that was the idea from the prime minister. Uh, the prime minister is is a man, but uh, that was his idea, and we uh, supported him. Why it is very important, and we shouldn't stop on this very thing. So, well, my point of view, we have 75 uh, percent in our ministry; those are women, and then the leading position, uh, more than 50 percent, those who are leaders in our ministries. Uh, so why it happened? When we say in the new vacancy, we're trying to uh, uh, choose uh, uh, women. Women are not applicants in majorities. So uh, we are not absolutely sure that I can do. I am the woman. I can do better, etc. The main idea is that we didn't create the conditions uh, for the women applicants. The women are thinking. How can I combine this type of work with uh, my family, husband, kids, uh, etc.? So, well, just to motivate uh, women, we have to create the ability for the women. We have to create nannies, working rooms, uh, the ability to have babies on the working place, etc. So, well. We have to be realistic to accept from the women the uh, right attitudes towards the roles. Uh, and the main investment is to educate men, to educate men, to support uh, the family intentions of uh, women. And it's very important, so well, partners or husbands. So, so if to train them, it is a 50% of the success to reach the best things from the side of women. So both for women and for men, they need to have nannies, right? So, okay, let's finish. And it is the end of our panel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, speakers, and we uh, ask you to take pictures, family pictures, so well. So we have time for relaxation, so well, we have the coffee break, and the second uh, part of our discussion will start.